I'm Phil with Phil's Probes, and I'm here right now with George from AES. We've had a relationship, I don't know, George, probably been over 30 years now. I think so. Yeah. Yes, we were young then, we but we still then, are. And we're still young at heart. So over the years, we've gone through several iterations of the Phil's Probes in attempts to improve its, its performance and its quality and its longevity. And today we want to talk a little bit about the needles and how we can we can illustrate why the needles are designed as they are and also to give you some tips on how you might lengthen the life of your Phil's probe and make it last uh, a longer time. None of these probes are lifetime. They're, they're, they're fragile comp testing components, but we would like you to get the most life out of it that you possibly can. Okay, we're looking at the five needles that are in the end of the Phil's probe here. And what we want to do is just show you a comparison why we use these small needles. For example, if you are the type of guy that likes to poke a hole in the wire using a conventional probe, look at the size of the hole you're going to pierce. It's going to be big. I call it the railroad spike. It's, it's going to damage the wire and give it a spot to get intrusion from moisture, especially in country where there's salt on the roads. Now this is a Pomona probe, and you can see that its needle, while smaller than the railroad spike, is still quite large in comparison to the small needles on the Phil's probe. And then finally, we've got what we typically call the back probe, and it's about a similar size to my needles, but it is still a little bit larger, so if you pierce the wire, you're going to damage it more than, than you would with the, with, the, with the Phil's Probe design. So that's why those needles are small. We want to do as little damage to the wire as possible and yet get a solid electrical connection. So we've taken a, uh, a wire here, and on the left-hand side, you can see the holes left by the Phil's probes. Now we got it under a, uh, a, a magnifying scope here so that we can actually see them. I could not find them with my bare, with my eyes. Of course, my eyes are 64 years old and they don't work so good anymore. So that's not too surprising. But the hole on the right side was made with a Pomona probe. And I think you can appreciate the difference in the size of the wound left in the insulation of the wire. Still recommend if you're in country where there's salt on the road and lots of moisture, you ought to seal up those holes with uh, fingernail polish. Clear fingernail polish is a good choice for doing the sealing. So we have attempted to make a compromise between durability of the needles and the damage done on the insulation of the wire. Let's face it, the manufacturers don't want you poking holes in wires. But the reality is when we're checking an intermittent, we want to have a solid connection and we don't want to interfere with anything that might accidentally fix the problem. And that's why we need to pierce the insulation on wires from time to time, in spite of the fact that we know that the manufacturer wants us to take our back probe and poke it in next to it. And we may actually, actually fix the problem by doing that. And that way we will never know what was actually wrong with the vehicle. We don't know that we've made a repair by doing our testing. So that's the reason for our piercing probe. The goal is small needles, no wire damage. Over the years, we started off, my goal was to have a longer probe than what was conventionally available. And that was a, that was a good move because it allows you to get deeper into the engine compartment to get a wire and keep your hands away from the exhaust manifold and so forth. But we found that under the dash, that can be a, an impediment because you bump into stuff. So we designed a shorter one, and this little little one is really nice for getting brake light switches and and actuator doors for air conditioning, for example, because you, it gives you more room to work. But sometimes you want to get, say, an air fuel sensor, an oxygen sensor, and it's way down there in the deep bowels of the engine. And so we have a long one that allows you to, to do that without standing the chance of burning yourself. So those are the, that's the reason why we went with some options for the standard 11-inch Pro. To conclude our little video here, just want to mention some of the benefits of our probes as compared to other probes. 
Cost-wise, this is going to cost you a bit more. Our goal is to have a long-lasting probe that is going to give you good life and good electrical testing during its, its duration. One of the things that we've done is we have changed the material in the barrel of the probe here. I won't say this will hold up to a blowtorch, but you, if you happen to put it on an exhaust manifold and forget about it, there's a good chance it, it will survive unscathed. I don't recommend you do that, but if you should do it by accident, it is not plastic. This is very, very durable. In, additionally, it's very strong. If you break one, you are using it as a pry bar. And of course, it's not designed to do that. If you take care of your needles, not pierce wire that's very cold and very hard, and don't turn on cooling fans and draw a high current, you should get longevity and you should have successful electrical testing. So thank you for watching. And I wanna thank George and the folks here at AES for giving me great experience over the years in all of our dealings. It's been a real pleasure. Thanks, Phil. It's great seeing you again, and uh, it's an excellent probe. Thanks. Appreciate it.